Sanguineus. He takes another step. Ahead, the severed corridor ends in a doorway. Brother. The doorway stands open. Its frame is woven from scrimshawed human bone. He steps through it and finds himself in a narrow tunnel. It is barely wide enough for him to move along it, the sheer black walls tight on either hand. He looks up and sees that the walls rise higher and higher above him. It's no tunnel. It's a slender crevasse, a long narrow fissure split between towering cliffs. He starts to advance. Again, the whispers. Sanguineus. The floor is wet, black rock, and is utterly flat, as though it has been smoothed by centuries of passage. Indeed, it almost feels as if this slight pathway has been worn down through the cliffs by eons of repeated single-file procession, uncountable feet making the same lone journey he is making, gradually eroding this seam. Impossibly high above him, he can see the sky, a narrow river of night sky and stars beyond the cliff tops that mirrors the path he treads. At last, he steps free into the open beyond. The Lupercal Court is a vast space of fluted columns, with arches springing from the imposts to create a soaring rib ceiling. The floor is polished stone. The scale of the court is immense and humbling, an architecture designed to create an artificial infinite. Sanguinius is just one tiny moat of gold and white in an impossible, soaring cathedral of obsidian and black marble. Such a chamber could not and should not exist on the vengeful spirit. The light here, viscous and heavy, is a dull crimson glow. Welcome, brother. At last. He thinks for a moment that the room itself has spoken, but part of it moves. Part of the stupendous Gothic grandeur turns to look upon him. Horus Lupercal smiles. This video is sponsored by my OnlyFans, where I do my meaningful sex educational content, fitness, health, nutrition, relationship advice, and more.